Pastor Troy. Hey, Pastor Luke. Here we are again uh, with Lesson 9. Uh, we're covering the book of Joshua and when God leads the people of Israel to Canaan, the promised land. Okay. And so uh, to recap where we left off with our last lesson, uh, the people of Israel had disobeyed God, and so they were wandering around the wilderness for 40 years. And so when we get to Joshua, that, that 40 years is ended, and God is now bringing them to to the land of Canaan to give it to them. Okay. And Moses has died, and so they have a new leader, and his name is Joshua. What does Joshua mean, Pastor Troy? Well, I believe in the Hebrew it's Yeshua, mm -hmm. and it means the Lord saves. Is there a, in the New Testament, a similar name? There's a name in the New Testament me that means the Lord saves. What would that name be? Jesus. Yeah, so in the New Testament, Jesus is actually the same name as the name Joshua yes. in the Old Testament. And so Joshua, as we'll see, actually is a type of Christ uh, in the Old Testament. He, he points forward ultimately to the real Christ, the real Jesus. Uh, yeah, he's so, one who's chosen to lead the people mm -hmm. to life. Into, so God saves them. Into the promised land that God had uh, promised to them. And so uh, Jesus, you know, he does the same. He, he brings us uh, into life with him. And ultimately, when he comes back, he's going to lead us into life, into the, the promised new creation. So God chose Joshua. He did. To lead and save the people. He did. Yes. yes. So uh, the book of Joshua is very much a fulfillment of the promises that God had, get, had given to the Israelites' uh, ancestors. And so before we get started with Joshua, I just want to read from Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, where this is where God is once again giving, making a covenant or a promise to Abraham. He's right. already done that in Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, and he's doing it again here in Genesis 17. Because promise is our theme yes. as we go through the Old Testament here. And so in verse 8 of chapter 17, it says, God says, I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And so God specifically promised that he would give to Abraham and eventually his descendants, the people of Israel, the land of Canaan. The and land that, of your sojournings. Where they traveled as... Wandered around? Yeah. Okay. And so this is now going to become their land. God is going to give it to the people of Israel. So place is really important. So they're not going to wander forever, but there's going to be a place that they can settle in, mm -hmm. that they can build up, that they will call home. Yes. And they can rest Mm -hmm. but continue to be the people God has called them to be. Yes. And, you know, to us, it might be a little strange, uh, but to the Israelites, the, the promise of land, land in the Old Testament is actually very, very important. There's a whole theology of the land. Yeah. Uh, and this is a big part of that, and, and we'll get to that in a few moments. Uh, so looking now at Joshua chapter 1, God is speaking to, to Joshua, and I just want to highlight a couple verses here in, in the first chapter. Verse, verse 2. Uh, God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, that is the Jordan River, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. So once again, this idea of land, very, very important. And jump now to verse 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. The, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way very prosperous, and then you will have good success." Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And Pastor Troy, reading, hearing those verses, is there a theme that pops up maybe three times? Uh, God says, be strong and courageous. Yes, he tells Joshua this three times. And if you remember our last lesson, we ended in, with Deuteronomy 31, where God said the same thing to Joshua at least twice. You'll be strong and courageous. Why do you think God is telling Joshua to be strong and courageous again and again and again? Because it is scary at times to do the things that God says, to be the people that God has called us to be. So we're going to hear about this. So God says, here's the promised land, which would seem to be a great thing. But then 
before going into the promised land, some of the people were afraid. Mm -hmm. So the opposite of courage is cowardice. Yes. Like the cowardly lion. Mm -hmm. So, so it takes a, a strength and a trust to believe God mm -hmm. and to do what he says to do. And so God says to meditate, to dwell in his word. And if you do that, then he says, you can dwell in my land. Mm -hmm. You can be my people. To abide in God's word, you get to abide in the land that he has given you. Yeah, so God wants good things for his people, but by nature, after the fall, Genesis 3, um, we kind of go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. and God, we have to be reminded again and again, and God then even encourages mm -hmm. by saying, be strong and courageous. Yeah, it, you know, God is telling Joshua, believe in me, trust yeah. in me, right. know that I am with you. So have faith in God, the God who has been faithful to all these promises that we've to been talking Abraham, about. To Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Yes, to Moses. To Moses. Uh, God has been faithful, and I, God will be faithful to Joshua and the people of Israel yeah. as well. Even after they build golden calves, that we heard yeah. in the last lesson. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, because God is giving them the land of Canaan, but he's not, it's not like they're walking into an empty land with nobody there. There are people living in the land of Canaan, the Canaanites and all these other peoples. And God has told Joshua, and the Israelites, you're going to destroy these people. Now that, now that might make us uncomfortable. We might not like that, uh, but God is God. And you know, these are all people that had rejected God. They were worshiping false gods. They were doing some terrible, nasty things like child sacrifice, all sorts of awful things. And so God chose his special people to really to purge that land of the wickedness that was living there. Yeah. God purifies the land. Yes. And he purifies the land by getting rid of impure people who do mm -hmm. things that are just evil. Yeah. That are the opposite of what God says to do. And it's not that God delights in destroying no. these people. No. God he doesn't take pleasure in the death of the world. No, he doesn't. And, but God still saves some of these, these Canaanite people. And we'll get yeah. to some in this next chapter. So in chapter 2 then, uh, Joshua, no, he's, he's a soldier. He's a commander. And so he, he sends out a couple spies across the Jordan River to check out a town called Jericho. Oh, Jericho. <laughs> uh, so the spies are, uh, are, are they, they check out this first kind of fortress city of Jericho, right. and they meet a woman named Rahab. Now, Rahab. I knew her name. Why didn't you ask me her name? <laughs> Rahab uh, is a Canaanite woman. She's not an Israelite, and she's also a prostitute. Yes. Um, so she's got a lot of things going against her. That's not a position of honor. No. Uh, but she hides the spies. So she actually helps the spies out. She protects them from the, the soldiers of, of Jericho, uh, and, and, and she helps them out. She, and she helps them sneak out of the city when they want to leave. Uh, and I want to point out in chapter 2, Rahab says to, to the spies in verse 11, And as soon as we heard it, that is what God had done uh, to the, to the peop enemies of Israel, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save, that you will save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them and deliver our lives from death. So Rahab, she helps the spies out and she's asking the spies, hey, when you just conquer our city, please spare me and my family because your God, Yahweh, is God. So Rahab... A real God. Yes. Rahab is confessing some measure of faith of who Yahweh is. And it, it's kind of cool that God uses a Gentile pagan prostitute to help save his people. Because, we'll see in a couple chapters, God does spare Rahab and her family. And she pops up later in the biblical story. Where does she pop up? In Matthew 1 verse 5, in part of the genealogy of Jesus. So she is a direct ancestor of Jesus. She's like a great, 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 mini greats grandmother of Jesus, which is pretty cool that God, you know, God wants to save all people and he chooses somebody even like Rahab to carry out his plan of salvation. Well, and she is very courageous. She is. She does something that is not easy to do, mm -hmm. and God blesses her because of that. Interesting, because in 2.11, it says, and as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted. So, wow, your God is a real God, and that was really scary, but then she believes in this real God mm -hmm. and does something courageous. Yeah. The Holy Spirit created faith in her. Yeah. All right, so Rahab helps the spies, and we move into chapter 3, where Joshua and the people of Israel cross 
the Jordan River. It's a miraculous crossing. So in the front are the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And the first priest, as soon as they step into the water, the water stops flowing and they're able to cross on dry land. Yeah, uh, so kind of like the Red Sea. Yeah, very, very similar. Except a lot smaller. <laughs> yes, quite a bit smaller. Uh, and then let's, let's jump to chapter five then. So Joshua and the Israelites, they're getting ready. They're, they're near the city of Jericho. And one night Joshua meets somebody. So in verse, verses 13 and following in chapter five. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take off your sandals from your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And then moving into chapter 6, this commander of the army of the Lord tells Joshua how he and the Israelites are going to conquer the city of Jericho. They're going to march around it once for six days, and on the seventh day they're going to march around it seven times. And they're going to blow their trumpets, and the walls are going to come fall. tumbling down. So who is this, this commander of the Lord's army? He's kind of an interesting fellow. Who is this? The commander of the Lord's army that Joshua bows down and worships, and the commander doesn't tell him not to worship him. If I remember correctly, Pastor Luke, this is the pre-incarnate second person of the Trinity. It's Jesus before he is born of the Virgin Mary. Yes, this is the Son of God. Yeah. This is the pre-incarnate Christ. Yeah, that's uh, what I was trying to say. Yes, uh, so this is not just an angel. This is actually the second person of the Trinity. Joshua is talking to the Son of God here. Yeah. So he's not named Jesus yet. Yeah. Because he's, 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 he's not a the human Jesus. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but it's kind of cool that Joshua meets Jesus here. I mean, right. it's not the human Jesus yet, but it is the Son of God. Yeah. And that he encourages him, like, take this city, I am with you. He doesn't mess around. Either. No, no. He's, he's got a sword. Serious. He's got a sword. He's got a sword and he uses it. Yeah. He's ready to go. All right, so moving on, chapter 6. So we have the fall of Jericho. You know, they, they do the marching around for right. seven days. Uh, and they blow their trumpets and the, the walls come down. They, they go in and they conquer the city. And they save, verse 23, they save Rahab and her family. She is preserved because she helped the spies out. All right, moving on, chapter 7. They go on to the next city. And so this, um, the city of Ai, and they conquer Ai. Spelled uh, A-I. A-I, yep. Okay. Uh, and this is... What happens in the next several chapters, uh, the, the campaigns that Joshua leads to conquer the land of Canaan. You know, they conquer city after city, nation after nation, king after king. Um, <clears throat> so that's chapters roughly 10 through 13. Okay. And then in chapters 13 through 22, we have, you know, they've, they've conquered all of Canaan or most of Canaan. And God is now allotting the land of Canaan to the 12 tribes of Israel. And... You know, if we were to read all of this, this would be very dry reading. And I'm just going to read a little bit from chapter 15. I'm just going to pick a verse. And in the lowland, Eshtaol, Zorah, Ashna, Zenoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Inam, and so on. Does any of that mean anything to you, Pastor Troy? Uh, no, I was wondering if you were speaking English. <laughs> uh, so God is allotting all of these villages and towns and cities to the people of Israel. And they... He does so by giving them specific places and names. And to us, you know, none of these places, they, they don't mean anything to us. But to the people of Israel, this was actually a very special moment. Right. God is giving them these places to be their, their new home. So, like, you know, think about it this way. If, if you were to start talking to me about, or if I were to start talking about Wood River, Kennesaw, Junietta, Alda, Carroll, do, any, do those places mean anything to you, Pastor Troy? Uh, not really. Is that in Georgia? Is that in Indiana? No, uh, it's uh, in Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska! That's my home. Like those are the towns where I grew up, like okay. where I'm from. And so, if you were to start telling me about those places, I would get super excited. Like, hey, that's home. I know yeah. that place. Yeah. That's what this is for the people of Israel. Um, God is fulfilling Genesis 12, 15, and 17 right here by giving them these specific places. And so, chapters 13 through 22. Although they're kind of weird and dry and maybe boring to us, this is actually the climax of the book of Joshua. Yeah. God is 
literally fulfilling his promises. He does what he says he's going to do, yep. and it's very specific, and this is your place. Go to your place. Yes. So I guess like if, with our family sometimes, we rented a big cabin with my extended family over the summer, and we went around and picked out the room that each family was going to mm -hmm. stay in. That was exciting. Yep. Some of us got, everybody got a good room. Yep. Some were maybe a little more interesting than others, mm -hmm. but that was our place. Yeah. And it was their place that God had given to each tribe to, to call home, to raise families, to cultivate the land, to, to, to be God's people in this very specific place. And again, the promise of land. Very important. Yeah. So that's chapters 13 through 22. Now we'll jump to, toward, to, to the end, um, chapters 23 and 24. Uh, so in verse 1 of chapter 23, it says, A long time afterward, when the Lord had given rest, to Israel from all their surrounding enemies. We'll just pause there. No more fighting? Yeah. No, they had, they had done what God commanded them to do, and God gives them rest. Now this, it doesn't last forever, um, and the people of Israel, they do disobey eventually, uh, very quickly. Um, but this points forward to when the new Joshua, Jesus, will lead us into the new creation when he comes back, and he will give us our eternal rest. Yes. Um, and so in chapter 23, Joshua addresses the leaders of Israel. He warns them, don't follow the Canaanites because there's still Canaanites around. Don't worship their gods. Worship only Yahweh. Uh, in verse 11, he tells them, therefore, to love the Lord your God. And then he offers warnings, don't disobey God. Don't chase after false gods. Only follow a God. And he does this again in chapter 24, where we have which probably one of the more famous verses in uh, the book of Joshua. Joshua is addressing the people of Israel. And in verse uh, 14, he says, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the false gods. And then verse 15, he says, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served, so the false gods, or the gods of the Amorites, more false gods. But as for me, Joshua says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. So Joshua is uh, encouraging the people of Israel, because he's about to die at this point. He's, he's an old man, and he's telling people, God has been faithful to you. Be faithful to him. Keep following him. Trust in him. Don't worship false gods. Well, and so Joshua has had strength and courage, and this is a strong statement. You can do whatever you want, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yep. And then the people said, well, far be it from us yep. that we should forsake the Lord to serve mm -hmm. other gods. And they tell the story, because God is the one who brought us here. Yeah, he gave us this land. He gave us these towns and villages, all this to us. And so this generation of Israelites, they were actually pretty faithful. Now they yeah. did screw up here and there, but they were pretty faithful. Uh, the generation prior, not so faithful. Generations following, not so faithful. But this generation, they were pretty faithful to God. Yeah. Um, the generation that took the land of Canaan that God had given them. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up here. Uh, talking about the fulfillment of promise of land to the people of Israel. Any videos that you uh, want yeah, to watch? Yeah, you can continue to check out the uh, Bible Project video. We'll have a couple of them uh, linked to the video. Okay. All right, see you next time.